Good morning. Welcome everyone to Admiral Markets. We're going to take a look at the Forex market together. Uh, I'm going to check if the sound is good. I think I need to change my microphone settings. This should make the sound a bit better, hopefully. Alrighty, so great. I got one confirmation that it is. Pretty good. So let's start this uh, session together. Let's take a look at quickly at this PowerPoint that uh, explains why we're looking at this. We're looking at the forex market, but first of all, also the risk disclaimer explaining the trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for educational purposes only. Alrighty, so thank you for your attention on that. I'm going to give you some time to uh, read through this. But basically it is uh, the same risk disclaimer as always warning you of the risks involved when trading in general and trading forex and global financial markets. Good. So with that said, let's take a look at these five steps of forex trading. It is a mini trading plan. Of course, these are a lot of variables that could change and differ, but basically everyone is looking at the trend, looking for opportunity, checking if there are any filters, then establishing a trigger, and then deciding an entry. My usual methods are using FIBs, trend lines, and moving averages. And now we can take a look at the Forex calendar. As always, take a quick look at what's going on. We got GDP going, uh, coming, or being announced at 1 hour 42 minutes from now. And we have USD core durable goods and consumer confidence. I don't think there's any NFP or FOMC this week, so only normal red tagged events. Of course, Friday is the last day of the month, so that's always uh, has its own risks. Alrighty, so let's take a look at today. If you uh, want to register for any other um, Webinars, by the way, go to admiralmarkets.com, go to education, click on webinars, and you can sign up by clicking on this blue button. Today, we have the 28th of January, we have trend channel trading. And tomorrow, we'll be looking at reversals and Thursday intra day. Pretty good. So, let's take a look at the euro dollar. Yesterday's candle was bearish, in fact, two days of bearish candles in a row, but there was a very bullish candle prior to that. So personally, I'm looking for more upside continuation um, because the impulse is still up. We're just having a bit of a triangle or pause at the moment. So if you know why there's a daily bearish candle, then uh, that is fine. All right? If there would be a big dare, daily, um, daily bearish candle, at some other point, maybe after a huge run up, uh, I would be uh, more inclined to think that is a reversal sign on this uh, price action pattern. From my perspective, it's still looking like a consolidation. If you look at the four-hour chart and we connect the tops like this and the bottoms like this, it's if anything, it's a triangle or, or wedge after an impulse up, after a break of this lower brown line here. Let me make that a bit different of this purple line, right? So break of that purple line, bullish breakout, and uh, we are now having, after that breakout, after that impulse, we're having consolidation, which typically means that we're going to, we're pausing for more upside. So if we break above that red, that would be a typical um, breakout trade. Now, the official title of today is Trend Channels, but uh, sometimes we just don't have a channel at the moment. On the four-hour chart, we don't really have a channel, so we have only trend lines at the moment. We had this falling wedge, though. It's not a channel, right? And we broke out of that. So it looks like we can see that upside. 
up to 137.60 and then later up to 138 maybe, even 138.90. So that's what I'll be looking for. Let's take a look at the weekly. Last week we had a engulfing bullish candle. That candle totally engulfed uh, last week, the week before, although the close was just uh, a bit off the high, still definitely bullish. Right? In its entirety though, the whole formation is in, also in a triangle, because if you look at the green line and at the black line, we can see the price is uh, stuck in, uh, in between both. Right, so we can see that price is respecting the the resistance, it's respecting the bottom, and it's going to break either way at one point or another. The question is which one if it breaks to the downside, we still have some fibs to deal with here and this bottom before we can get some bigger falls. If we break to the upside, then we run into this resistance, but if we break above that resistance, let's zoom out, then we can see some breakout to 140 and 143, etc. to the upside or do we break actually down? So we're at a decision spot, a break or bounce spot, or actually two break spots, break up or break down. So that's the bigger picture. So back to the more uh, realistic four hour chart, or realistic for us at least, in the sense that uh, it's more tradable. And uh, looking for basically now, we're looking at basically moves within this triangle, right? This is all within the triangle. What we really want to see is a move outside of the mess, either higher or lower, but for the moment <clears throat> there's only a trade in the mess when we break out of this consolidation to the upside. So we can take a look at the hourly. Would any downside make sense? Uh, it could happen. I'm not saying, but I'd rather trade it to the upside because of this uh, typical pattern. The problem with downside is that it could turn at a whim, it could turn at any time at the moment because we had the impulse to the upside. We, in theory, the 50 fib could still definitely be a bouncing spot at 136.34, which is the next fib. We got a bounce off the 38.2 here. <clears throat> so the next fib will be the 50. So from the 50 or upon the break would be upside uh, possibilities. Let's take a look at the 15. And to me, a break of this trend line would look very nice, in fact. <clears throat> Looks like a very good trend line. Good angle, three hits. So let's see. At the moment, though, we're six minutes uh, shy of the close of the hour, and we have uh, engulfing twins. So we have to wait till the candles actually close. This hourly candle is actually closed. That would be a bit of a bearish price action, but I don't trust that particular price action too much because, uh, to me, there's it could bounce here or here or here, and. Maybe not that fall that much. Maybe it could fall a lot, but I would, wouldn't mind to skip that. We could take a look at Camarilla too. Maybe it's indicating that there's more downside than I expect. But from a technical point of view, when looking at patterns, this is bullishly set up because of impulse and correction. So looking for a break of that red line, uh, this, uh, this dark red line. Pound dollar. Let's see if that's similar. Let's start with the four hour two. And uh, we can see, or the day chart, we can see this is in a trend channel, in fact, an uptrend channel. Uh, the, the red, purple lines here, price bounce off the bottom, not only the bottom, but also these tops, and use that as support. So it used the 163 area as the bouncing spot for upside, right? A lot of support here, thick support that was used multiple times. So back to the four hour, and we bounced strongly to the upside there. Now we use these supports again as well as a bouncing spot, right? So that was a, a good uh, a good bounce. 
what would be the target? It could be actually, I feel like this, it could be all the way here. But the problem is one thing. We got a top of the trend channel here, plus we have a huge, huge, huge weekly top at 167, plus minus 167.40. So the, the pound dollar is an uptrend, but it is approaching major monthly and weekly resistance. Not only is it a resistance, but it's actually a decisive moment. If that level breaks, it's actually the weekly triangle is a bullish triangle. And if it doesn't, it could still be a bearish triangle. So it's important because of other reasons uh, as well. All right, so from the bigger perspective, let me, let me show you that, in fact, if we're talking about it anyhow. Uh, you see this triangle, the magenta lines, right there, those magenta lines, that's the triangle we're talking about. That is, looks like a bearish triangle because of the previous downside, so that's what's expected at the moment. But if we break this top, then that particular scenario is out of the window. So that's why that level is important. Back to the weekly, we can see that impulse was very strong down to the 23.6 and we hit the minus 272 target. We got basically three scenarios, it's three scenarios. This is the end of the up move and we fall. This is a retracement time and we go to the 786 down to 160 and we bounce. Or this is very bullish, and we go from the 23.6 all the way to the one, minus 618 at 171. So we have to measure which one is more likely. At the moment, it's difficult to tell. At the moment, we all we know is we hit the minus 272 from the daily perspective. We had engulfing twins here, but then we had yesterday again a bullish day. So some upside from a lower time frame perspective, some upside to challenge 167 would seem in play and seem logical, but then a move down from there, at least back to the bottom, would also seem logical. That's, at the moment, what we could expect. Then the question is, do we break up or down? That's something uh, difficult to tell at the moment. Both are, in fact, possible. Uh, let's see, four-hour charts. Sorry, this is one-hour chart. <clears throat> uh, that's a bit difficult because we are pretty close to this top, so I like the euro dollar more. Despite the fact that the euro pound is in a downtrend, why do I like the euro more? Because it has space to break. This doesn't have much space, in my opinion. Unless it were to hook back to the 618 fib or maybe here and then bounce, there could be some space. But at the moment, price is very near this resistance, which means that our potential risk is about this. What is our potential reward about this? That is severely less than one to one and the statistical chance of that you know working out is doesn't justify the tremendous negative or or lower than one to one r to r here so therefore <clears throat> I would be uh, inclined not to uh, to see this as a, as an opportunity unless we get some uh, retracement or a potential breakout at, above this line. But then even then, the space is limited. Euro pound is in the downtrend at the moment, as we already discussed just quickly. Euro pound, big retracement, but now moving back down again. Good. So how does this look like from the daily perspective? Two bullish candles, 
but back to resistance, it looks more like a bearish setup because we made a, a higher low here still. <clears throat> Sorry, a, a lower high. I got it mixed up. We're making lower highs and lower lows. On the daily four hour, um, we went back to the long term moving averages, now breaking below the moving, this, these, these black band, right, on the four hour perspective. Went to the green band, now breaking below the black band, indicating that it was a re retracement at the moment. So looking more bearish at the moment. Not that I want to trade it, but just to keep an eye on the balance between euro and pound so that we can see that the pound is stronger. So if we want to uh, trade the euro yen or pound yen, we know it's better to probably short the euro yen or go long on the pound yen. I'm not saying that we should, it's just that we know that the pound is stronger than the euro. So that wraps up the euro pound and euro pound triangle. Let's take a look at the uh, Aussie. We got bullish price action on the four hour chart. <clears throat> We got the engulfing twin here. We got a hook back and bounce, and we keep marching forward. With uh, we see some wicks at the tops as well, but those didn't have any effect, and we keep marching forward uh, with this uh, odd USD. Now this uh, particular upside uh, is a reversal trade. If anyone took this trade, it is a reversal trade because it was a downtrend. Why is the downtrend? Take a look at this daily. Right, no doubts about it. And the weekly too. <clears throat> right, so definitely downtrend at the moment. Alrighty. So with that said, let's take a look at the four hour again. If uh, if you can see, you can see the. The bottoms being broken here. Uh, let's see these bottoms too. I'm not sure if they're the same level, roughly the same level, right? So daily and weekly bottoms broken, and odd USD fell down to 86.50. So there's a pretty good chance that this is a hook back for more downside. You can put a fib on the entire downside. Then you get 38.2 and 50 fib, right? Retracement, or we can put a fib on this very last downside, and we can look for the smaller FIBs to be uh, resistance. All right, so <clears throat> despite the bullish price action, we are in a downtrend, and there's reason to believe that at this resistance, these resistance levels, there could be a turn. That's something, of course, that would be always wise maybe to wait for confirmation of that turn via a price action signal on the one hour chart, for instance, or four hour, or even daily, depending on which time frame you use. There could be some small trade up to that zone, but that's a big resistance zone in my opinion, which means the potential reward is this, or maybe max this. Uh, the risk, however, you know, depending where you put the stop loss, but if you put it underneath the one hour bottoms here, it's about that, which is about one to one. And so I'm not a big fan of that particular trade. I'd rather wait for it to move up a few pips and then fall. So down to the 15, you can see in the 15 we're already in the uptrend. And we could put a channel, in fact, on this move. And let's take a look at the 50-minute world, how that looks like. <clears throat> so we got this channel going, right? The tops and bottoms are neatly being respected. Like this. Now approaching the top of the channel as well. Let's put fibs on this 50-minute channel. Got a 618 bounce here, went to the minus 272, then to the minus 618 target, then to the minus 1000. Now let me move that fib and use the next one. So this minus 618 target is around 8806, that's about 15 pips left, 
the 15 pips left, not only is it the eight minus 618 here, but also let me change the color of that fib. But also the top of the trend channel. So I don't see much space left. Personally, from the tools I use, at around 88, 80, 8806, you know, there should be resistance. If this does make a downside bear flag like that, bull flag, excuse me, and then break, could be a small intraday long up to the one hour resistance, right? If it does something like this, it hooks back to about 8770, right? After it moves up to 86, 86, 10, 8, sorry. After it moves up to 88, 88, 10, then hooks back to 8770, then there could be about a 50, 80 pipper to 8850, and then we should see resistance. Something like that seems to be the most likely of my, my opinion. Small up, probably a bull flag down, break up, close and reverse down. But something we should be aware of is that uh, the small up, that could be the turning spot as well, right? So that's why we have to keep an eye on this black uptrend channel. Because if it breaks, if price breaks through that, if it breaks back down, that would be a good with the trend continuation trade. All right, where I have the red arrow with the blue line in it. That would be the breakout of the black trend channel. The other red arrow would be the close and reverse scenario if the audio is the word to go up higher. So small down, small up, sorry, then down, and then either break down below the the 50-minute channel, or a bounce off the 50-minute channel for one more upside, and then a close in reverse. All right, so that's my opinion. I would like to trade it to the downside. I would like to trade the break to the downside. But if it actually bounces and breaks this smaller bull flag, then there is a small, I would say, a small intraday trade up to that bigger resistance. Alrighty, Kiwi. Very choppy four hour chart. Let me zoom out to, uh, because if it's choppy, I want to immediately zoom out to understand what's going on in the bigger time frame. So that I can understand, because if I see consolidation on whatever time frame, I want to zoom out to have a better grasp of what that consolidation means on a lower and higher time frame, because that has more value than just trying to analyze a, a choppy move, unless you're trading uh, that particular choppy move. Um, so daily, very, very choppy. Nothing changed on this Oz, uh, Kiwi. Let's see. Weekly, very choppy. Kiwi is very, very equal to the dollar relatively throughout uh, the last few years. I mean, it was a high here at 88, a low at 74, it's only 1,400 pips, and the, the zone really is, is, is getting smaller. That's why we're having a contracting triangle. We have higher lows, lower highs at least. And recently, we have actually consolidation about halfway that triangle, halfway to magenta lines. Do you see that? So, a bit which is even tighter, right? This is a very tight box. So back to the daily, we know now that these magenta lines are about halfway the triangle. We have the blue lines are about halfway the magenta triangle. I don't think personally that it makes sense to trade this Kiwi. I don't see the sense of it. It's too choppy in my opinion. I would suggest to, to take a look at something else. Richard is saying uh, 618 is also double zero level. Yeah, indeed. It's a round number as well. That itself could be the resistance spot, could be the turning spot, and eventually we break through the trend channel. It's definitely possible. So we have to keep an eye on this channel to see if we can continue with this channel from our upside or if we break out of it indeed. But in any case, the 88 level is a, is a level that one would expect to be resistance 88 or 88.10. Yes, totally agree. 
plus it's these psychological round numbers, as you said. So let's see. Doesn't make sense to go long though right in front of that resistance. Dollar Swissy. Alrighty. Is surely in a downtrend just like the euro dollar is an uptrend at the moment. Let me take off some of these lines. We broke all of that. We were in an uptrend as you can see. But uh, we crashed through the last support line here like this with the big impulse, in fact. Pretty big impulse. There's no divergence, pretty strong AO reading. But at the moment, we are retracing to the upside. And it's the same like the euro dollar. If we put a trend line below these bottoms, that would be a good break to the downside. In fact, I had a pending order this morning below this consolidation right here uh, with a stop loss above it with a target at the 78.6 fib, this one, right? So that was my target, and about this was about my risk. It was about a three to one trade, but that's some, that happens. You know, the trade plan didn't get executed because we got a bounce, but luckily it bounced before it took me in, so it didn't cost me anything. It is break, bouncing again, but if it does break, once again, that would be my plan for downside on the dollar Swissy. That's the one hour perspective. Four hour or daily perspective, difficult to tell. We, this could still be a hook back from our upside, right? Because this was a pretty strong impulse. It could be a hook back from our upside. But even if that were true, then the 78.6 fib, right? There could be a move down to the 78.6 fib. That doesn't mean there's not a good intraday trade down towards the 78.6. Just because of the daily analysis doesn't mean that couldn't be that potential. The 618, of course, could be the bouncing spot as well. But most likely, if we break purple, we will make that fall down there. Dollar CAD. Dollar CAD, uh, big breakout from this weekly perspective, right? No doubt about it. If we put trend lines on the top, we can see breakouts of this triangle. Right, breakout, hook back, continue, hook back, continue. For the dollar CAD, a move like this over the last few weeks is, is tremendously big. If you look at this impulse here, it's a lot compared to this. What are the targets? If we put a fib on this very first up move, we can see we already went through the minus 272 after pausing at that spot though. The next target is the minus 618 at 114.38. So let me zoom in now so you can see it a bit better. Look, we stopped at the 780.6 here after a three move down, and then we started this slow but sure uptrend, right? And that was a beautiful uptrend channel, in fact. Something like this. And funny enough, we actually broke out of that to the upside. Very strong oscillator reading which means there could stuff, definitely still be one more upside left. Four hour chart, we don't have any divergence between these stops yet, nor is that actually proper divergence, which means there's a good chance to break this top on the four hour perspective. Because most of the time, if there's any reversal at all, then we get it only after we have divergence. and We don't have it on the four hour chart. Which means that this trend seems to be sustainable, which means that I would expect more upside up to 114 maybe. We could put a fib maybe on this upside like this. Currently we stopped at the 23.6 fib. There could be a move down to the 38.2. Let me make this fib a different color. The 38.2 at 109.60-ish, roughly, that could be the bouncing spot. We could put a fib on this very first correction.
What do we see there? The minus 618 of that correction is about a 109.50, very close to the 38.2. So there could be that potential to move down and then bounce off of there. That's possible. Um, Let's take a look at the hourly. If it doesn't move down that deep, then it'll probably break out of this trend line. So that's my main two scenarios. If it breaks above purple, I, I would be a buyer. I would want to go long because we have a breakout on the hourly uh, chart of a four-hour uptrend, and there's no divergence. Uh, if we do not do that, then that will probably fall deeper and will maybe make a fall uh, towards, for example, the 38.2 at 110, one what was it? 109.50.60 with these support levels on the left as well. So either breakout or we continue to correct down as I said, to that level, and then move up from there. Dollar yen. Dollar yen made a big correction down to the 38.2 uh, fib, in fact, and we seem to be bouncing off of that level. That is something that I've been warning for, that we can get downside a three-wave correction down to the 38.2, which could be the bouncing spot for the uptrend continuation. We had a break out of that triangle after a strong uptrend already on the dollar end. This seems to be a shallow pullback from our upside. The next bouncing level would be the 50, but the 38.2 would probably be the most likely bouncing spot, in fact, of this daily fib. Sorry, I have the fib actually just a bit incorrect. Good, like that. So very close to the 38.2 fib, as we can see. That could be the bouncing spot. From the weekly perspective, we could see there is a potential for this to be a move up triangle at from the 38.2 fib. And what is the minus 272 target all the way at 111? And if we leave our daily fib on, that's the purple one, we can see that the purple fib, the purple minus 618, is very close to the weekly minus 272. Uh, and they're basically showing confluence at 110.66, almost to the pip. So that would be the target. 110.60. For dollar yen, in my opinion, there will be a pause probably at 107.50ish, which is the minus 272 of the daily chart. But ultimately, the weekly minus 272 in red, and the daily minus 618 in purple, will be the target. So we had a trend triangle breakout hook back continue scenario going on. So back to the daily. We had divergence here between the CCI, between these bottoms. So to the four-hour chart, we can see that this was just a correction for more downside. This upside, in fact, seemed impulsive, but was just a correction um, of this whole downside here. We got some bullish price action on the four-hour chart, one-hour chart, making kind of a triangle. So basically, if we break out of that triangle like this, Then uh, what we're doing right now, if we probably need to push still through this resistance at 102.90, a break above that would indicate that we have a good chance of continuing with that trend and the 38.2 38 being indeed the bounce we could expect 
upside upon the break of this four hour fractal and resistance, we could see maybe the upside continue to challenge at least these tops and then maybe if we break above that to higher levels. From this perspective, there was already a breakout trade, actually, indeed, here. That is a breakout, but as I said, I'm not maybe a big fan of this breakout, because if you look at the moving averages, what I was a bit afraid of is that the moving averages are totally flat in each other, prices in the moving averages. What I don't like about those particular breakouts is that, all, not that they're always bad, of course some will work, but the problem is that if the moving areas are flat like this, all of them, that a break usually is not, I mean, there's a good chance it's not sustainable. And you get a move back to the moving averages. Whereas if those are slanted, either up or down, their usage as a, the strength of the trend is pretty, very, pretty useful. And if you have a slant, that means there is a good trend. If you don't, then there's been a recent range, and a breakout of that is always uh, more difficult. This could maybe work very well, though, but the advantage of waiting for a break of the four-hour top is that we have more confirmation that this really has a spunk, a big enough drive, a big enough momentum to push through it. Alrighty. Let's see. Pound yen. Pound yen is breaking. Actually, uh, this is a trade I like a lot. Personally, the moving averages do have a slant here. They are pointing to the upside. And uh, I entered a, a long on this one, actually. Uh, this is actually entered around about 75, I think, if I remember correctly. Let me take a look. So it's not too far from now. Let me tell you. Yeah, 170, 76. So it's just a few pips below here. I'm sure it will still retrace those few pips if you like. I have a stop loss at 170, 22. And my take profit is aimed at 172.16. All right, so did everyone, if everyone, is anyone interested in those exact numbers again? I can say that 17076 I have it, although I should have taken this breakout just a bit tad earlier in fact, but uh, I didn't keep an eye on it. The actual breakout was earlier in fact, 69. 72 or 73 would have been better in fact, but I didn't change the pending order. I didn't have time to, uh, to keep an eye on it before this webinar. Um, Let's see. Alrighty. And stop loss could have been at 170.29 instead of 70.22. But that's below this, this uh, but I didn't change it as yet. That's okay. I can still do that now, in fact. 
So I'll move that stop loss just about seven pips, just below here to 29. Or even 170.30. Maybe 29. It's an uneven number, that's always good. Target 172.16. So Bob is in this. Great job, Bob. Let's see. I hope it is. Well, it's anyhow a good, I think, a good plan. So whatever the outcome, you know, that's, that's life. Any questions? I don't see any questions so far. But basically, let me show you maybe from a more detailed uh, perspective. Pound, yen, two, just like the dollar, yen. It is uh, actually made a very strong retracement down to 38.2 and has had several very bullish candles to the upside. This is looking like a very strong uh, impulsive uh, breakout or bounce to the upside in fact and this could continue to the upside. All right, this was a correction. We had a very nice trend channel here. This was a very, in, in a daily perspective, this was a very correction, uh, corrective chart pattern, right? This is impulse and this is a correction from a daily perspective. So there could be a, a turnaround here from the daily to continue with that trend. And the hourly is, uh, is already set in an uptrend as well. And 15 is now breaking to the upside. Dollar Yen, we know that Dollar Yen is potentially breaking to the upside which will help the pound yen and pound dollar of course uh, although I don't like to trade I wouldn't jump in here there is still the potential for it to continue up to the next resistance your yen could have something similar by the way but I like the pound yen more and I'll explain why in a second first of all though let me take a look at what uh, Viganta sent to us. Ah, thank you. Very nice. So this is a, um, we talked about this. this, is a harmonic chart pattern. It uh, looks like a Gartley with an 886 fib on both sides, roughly speaking, which I think is a Gartley if I remember correctly. <clears throat> and uh, that indicating the end of that correction to the downside and therefore potential bouncing spot to the upside. That's the dollar yen, by the way. Great stuff. Let's see, the euro yen. Uh, let's see, I actually took the euro yen as well, though I wanted to say the reason why the pound yen is, is better than the uh, euro yen is because the moving averages are, are, are still equal to each other. Um, I was even thinking, I actually wanted to delete it, but I didn't have time yet. So I did enter, which is a bit uh, annoying. But then again, I, I, to be honest, I think it is a good setup, just like the Pound Yen. Uh, you can see that the what I like about it, well, the reason why I deleted it, wanted to delete it, was because it made this dip down. But in fact, it made it bounce up. So if there is a reason to keep the order on. So that's good. So a bit lucky there that uh, the order is act 
actually still valid from my perspective. So maybe still lucky that I left it on in fact, but uh, I just uh, will check one thing. Give me one second. Already. Let me take a look at the euro. The euro is bouncing, as I said, it could bounce any point. It is a bearish one hour candle, but doesn't mean anything at the moment. What's happening with the pound? Aussie is still moving up. It's getting closer to that 88 level. Kiwi is moving up too. How about the Swissy? Swissy is still bouncing to the upside. Let me take a look at the 15 minute world. CAD. Alrighty. So dollar yen is moving to the upside. That's the break that uh, could have been taken as well. But the euro and pound are both in an uptrend. So I do like the euro yen, therefore, and pound yen a bit better than uh, this this dollar yen. Although the dollar yen would probably just work as just as well, in fact. But therefore, maybe just a slight preference for those two. So those are looking like good breaks. Uh, from my perspective. Uh, someone was asking about these moving averages. It's a very simple uh, moving average. It's just the uh, color is the angle, that's all. Uh, and uh, basically they're the same as this. That's the only difference. This is a uh, 34, as you know, 34 you may close high and low. And uh, the other one is 136. Alrighty, so let's move on. The euro yen, by the way, uh, I'm thinking of, I had one at 140.62, and a stop loss at 140.28, and a TP at 141.55. Odd yen is moving to the upside as well was thinking about the odd yen instead of the euro yen as well because the euro odd is moving down so much. Um, so that was something I thought of as well, although I didn't like the fact that the odd USD uh, was in a resistance spot, which may, made me think that the odd could be in a resistance level for more downside. So that's why I didn't like the odd yen too much. But the odd yen, the odd definitely stronger against the euro if you look at it from the 50 minute perspective here, falling pretty fast. So I did think about the odd yen instead of the euro yen. Um, that's always a bit of a difficult choice, maybe, which cross to take. But in general, the yen is weakening. Pound yen is doing good as well, just like the odd yen, probably the best two at the moment. So the pound odd is not doing much, but there is some slight downside. So it looks like the odd at the moment is strongest. But what I didn't like about that is just that the odd USD is so close to that resistance level. <clears throat> so that's why I um, had some doubts. But at the moment, though, still odd is the strongest. All right, so your odd is in a downtrend now from a lower time perspective, certainly, for a while now already. But the four-hour world showing still uh, potential for your odd to bounce maybe around this level because of uh, this top in here at 155, the moving averages. We do have some divergence between the daily and weekly tops. Not in the four hour as yet. So 155 level uh, could be important. Maybe not. So I would rather wait for confirmation of any uh, particular bounce that could happen.
best is to wait for some price action uh, or either a break of the 15-minute fractal maybe, for instance, uh, because this is definitely set in a, in a downtrend, so it could fall further than we think. Uh, one hour pin bar, uh, a bounce, a hook back, for example, that could be a very sneaky method to get a very short stop loss. Of course, there's always a risk that it continues, but if it does bounce, there's a very good R2R there potential, although the chance is very small, or waiting for the 15 minute fractal or a trend line to break are all methods to trying to catch the bounce to the upside. Downside doesn't make sense to me because there's just a limited potential reward versus uh, a bigger uh, risk there. So the reward, let me do that in blue box like this, whereas the risk would have to be above the one hour fractal, that would be the technical stop loss. And you can see that those two don't really match up in a favorable manner. Same for pound odd, pound CAD. Big, big, big major uptrend. Can it continue? Difficult to say. There was a big weekly uh, wick. Uh, well, not big, but at least a decent weekly wick here. So there are some concern maybe, but difficult to tell if that wick will be really the turning spot. It's just about half the candle could be a bit of an exhaustion. It could still continue. Uh, we might want to be a bit more careful with the upside, but the trend is strong. Is there any divergence? There's no divergence on the four-hour chart, which doesn't really aid uh, any reversal potential here. So, yes, there is a wick on the weekly, but the daily four-hour chart is just a massive uptrend, accelerating, look at that, uh, even more. It's, it's curving up. You see that? It was slower here. Then it started to move up faster, and now it's like a rocket. So I don't see, without divergence, I don't see this turning uh, that quickly. So one hour chart, looking for a break probably above this trend line, for instance, for with the trend continuation breakout. So that looks pretty good. We can keep an eye on this one. I think it looks pretty interesting. A break up with that purple would be great with the trend trade on the pound CAD because the CAD weakness against the pound was really, really, really strong in the last few weeks. Really a big trend and no diversion. So this could this could easily continue. I'd like to see how this 15-minute candle closes. If it's bullish above the triangle, the, sorry, above the uh, moving averages, that would be a better setup uh, candle. So I'm keeping an eye on this. Let's see, we have six more minutes for the candle to finish. So let's go back in five minutes. I really want to see how this candle finishes uh, to get an idea. If, if there's a wick and a candle doesn't close above the moving averages here and there's a, just a wick, then there's you know probably uh, not much of a confirmation that the price can actually punish through these moving averages. So I want to see this candle, this 50-minute candle close in relationship to moving averages. Do we have enough power to really break above those moving averages? If yes, there's a good chance uh, we could break out, then I would probably put a pending order above this top. So let's see. Alrighty, so that's the pound cat. We'll go back in five minutes. Let me go quickly to the euro dollar again. Let's see. Goran is asking if I have a gap on the one hour chart. I don't see it on the one hour chart. Let me take a look. No. 
No, I don't see uh, a gap here. Dolly Yen is doing better. Maybe should have taken the Dolly Yen. It would have been up 20 pips already compared to the Euro Yen. But then again, from my perspective, um, as I told you, the Euro Dollar, even though there could be some downside, it, I, I would expect it still to be a bouncing spot. Maybe it doesn't bounce, you never know. That's why I wouldn't trade it, but uh, there is that potential. If it doesn't bounce, then um, I would wait for a, a big move down, I'll get a hook back, and there you can always short it upon the next higher low, in my opinion. Um, so down to the next pound odd is moving down. We talked about that. Pound New Zealand. Moving down as well, just like the urine is eating. And out of that, we got uh, some more crosses like odd New Zealand, odd CAD, New Zealand Swiss, Euro Swiss, Pound Swiss, etc. So those are more exotics. Not sure if you're interested in those. Yeah, that's strange, Gordon. I'm not sure. <laughs> Quite odd. Can't see it on mine. It's funny, huh? So two more minutes. I'm just going to keep an eye on this pound cat, if you don't mind. It's anyhow just a minute and a 20 second. And uh, see how that goes with this one. Okay. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions or maybe a particular exotic cross that you would like to see, let me know. We'll take a look at that one. I think we've taken a look at the, all the majors in the meantime, at least. Uh, you can use, well basically, uh, you can use two sets of uh, moving averages, all right? You could either use 34 and 136, or I use this, I use 34 and then 2, 144 and 169. So this is the green band, and this is the the black band, basically 144, 169, and 34. Or you could do the same with the 34 EMA and say, okay, um, instead of three, three, two, two longer term, you could take three longer term and have, like, like the 34 EMA has three, you can make three of the 136. All right, so that's, that's you know, a small difference. In this case, the green band has two and the black band has three, but you can do for the long term also three. And then you would have two sets of three. So basically now we got to close above the moving averages. To me, that seems 
there is a bit of a wick, but at least there's a close above it. So if we were able to break, the whole idea is anyhow a break above this top. So if we break above that top, um, then that seems good to me for continuation of this uptrend on the pound CAD to at least challenge these tops right in here around 150, 185.50, if not even higher. So that looks good. So I'm going to punch in the order one second. I go three pips, three pips above that level. So let me take a look at the high. The high of that candle is 184.43, so 184.73 plus spread. Uh, 184.73, about three pips spread, plus another three pips is 6.2. So I'll go at 185, 185, 1. 185.51. Yes. Stop loss, I will put tight one eighty four thirty nine no one sorry one eighty four eleven excuse me it's the bottom of those moving averages there and the TP I will put at one eighty six eighty one for the moment but I'll trail stop every 50 minute fractal. Uh, let's see, I made a small mistake here. Uh, it's actually 184.51, sorry. That made that's better. Made a small calculation mistake there. It is indeed 184.51, sorry. And the stop loss at 184.11. And the TP at 186.81. That's about 230 reward versus a 40 risk, or about 6 to 1. But as I said, I'll chill stop every 15 minute fractal. So the chance that it will actually hit the you know, that particular 6 to 1 is not all too high, but if it does, that will be great. If it doesn't, it will it'll be trail stopped out of that trade up to um, 6 pips every 50-minute fractal. So if there's a new 50-minute fractal, basically here, right, the stop loss will move 6 pips below there. New 50-minute fractal here, stop loss, 6 pips below there. So the only way that we'll really reach our TP if it's a very impulsive move. Uh, if not, then probably the trail stop would be taking us out, but that's okay. That's why it's there, in fact. Good. Dollar Yen still pushing up. Looks like uh, Yen weakness, the main story of the day, maybe with CAD weakness. Definitely not odd weakness at the moment. Uh, odd has pushed through that 88 level at the moment and reached the 88. Oh wait, that I was talking about at that zone, the 88 to 88 10 zone. So let's see. Wouldn't expect much of a breakthrough, but who knows? Uh, would be better for myself if the odd has a bit more weakness because I would like to see the euro bounce up more. So 
that the euro yen goes up as well, but the pound is doing nicely at the moment. Uh, up 27 on the pound yen and 4 on the euro yen at the moment. Pound CAD is waiting to be entered at the moment. Dollar Swiss C still not moving to the downside, but that's actually good for me. Although if it does move down, I wouldn't mind to short this one. Um, I guess that's that's it from my perspective at the moment. Any other questions? So, besides the moving averages, maybe we can find some trend channel uh, on the euro odd to the downside. Let me take a look. You can see here this is also in a trend channel, just like the odd USD. Seems to be a bit of an acceleration through it, but here too, once, I get, once again, I wouldn't expect some bounce maybe at this level. Let's see if that indeed happens. Just like the odd USD, though, I would think that this is um, reaching its uh, potential here. If we put a fibs on this downside, let's take a look. And as you can do with a 50-minute channel like this, you can see 618 fib. Uh, let's see, this one didn't hit the target, in fact, it was a bit shy. Normally we hit the target, maybe I have my fib wrong, uh, I have it. it has to be a bit higher. Even then we still missed it by a few pips, but well, that can happen on the 50 minute chart. Uh, then we got to move up, correction, 618 fib, down to minus 618 target, fifty fib, down to targets, fifty fib, down to target. So that's a pretty cool thing if you if you really find a nice 15 minute trend like this, you know, a nice channel like that, and you start fibbing all those swing highs from lows, and you you know you see those retracements, those could be nice, nice, nice pips to the downside. Uh, you know, it could be good swing trades there. 50, 80, 100 pips. Uh, we got a question from Siva about the FMOC. I didn't think there was an FMOC. I checked the calendar earlier this week. That's funny. <clears throat> Maybe it changed. Let me check again then. Ah, oh, you're right. That must have been added because I was looking on Monday and there was nothing. Hmm. Or I missed it, but I think it was added because I was looking Monday and I didn't see anything. So probably they added, or or I, or I was just looking through it and I, I missed it, but um, I doubt it, but you never know. Um, yeah. Well, that uh, what how it will affect it? That's that's always the question. The, no idea. It uh, it would depend on the figures that are, re are released or the statement that is released. Sorry. Be interesting to see. The uh, the effect though will have uh, I think could have a pretty interesting result because from a technical point of view we can see that the euro dollar is close to resistance. It's close to support. We're basically in this triangle. Right, stuck about halfway from the weekly perspective. Let me take everything off here. From the weekly perspective, we got this trend line coming in as resistance. We got uh, this one coming in as support. So how does that look like on the daily? It looks like this, which means basically we're stuck in between those two levels, those resistance and support levels. So it's going to be interesting to see if we can break out of one of those two. If we can, we might have more directional guidance for a longer move one way or the other.
I haven't read any reports regarding you know what could be expected for FMRC, but uh, normally if you read through expectations, there's always a, a wide mix of what people expect, um, and it's difficult to filter through. No one really knows, except if you're on the uh, board of the Fed. So, but I, I just stick to these technicals and. It will be interesting for, for me to see if we break out of one of these two or if we stay in this triangle, etc. But uh, the usual effect, of course, in general is, uh, is huge volatility, normally speaking, during, before, or quietness before, large volatility during and after that news event. Uh, I'm personally expecting a break up, but uh, it's you know the difference is quite small. I would say the reason why is because I think that looking at this weekly, we can see that this is an uptrend. We if we put a fib on this downside, uh, we did stop at the 618, so there that could be a reason to fall but we would really need to break through this. So I'm just keeping an eye on both of these lines. and That's my main criteria, a break of those lines. But yes, this week, or last week, we had bullish, bullish weekly uh, candle. Look, this was a bullish candle. Plus, still, if you, however you put it, if you look at this weekly from close up, you see higher highs and higher lows. So, plus last week's bullish candle, I would give a slight advantage to the upside break. I think that the upside break is slightly more probable than the downside break, but um, I would uh, gladly wait for the break of any of these purple lines. Until we break it, it seems to be more bullish to me at the moment. As I said, from a four-hour perspective, this is more looking like a triangle for an up move up. We will soon see. Looks like uh, pound cat pushed through that trend line. So let's see if being trigger happy made sense here because we're not waiting for the continue, but taking the breakout immediately. But we do have a, a wick on the one hour chart. We have this hour is a wick and the candle is going to close in 15 seconds roughly speaking. And if you look at the one hour candle, it is a bullish candle with a wick at the bottom. Last hour had a wick. So to me that does look, price action wise it looks bullish on the pound cad. Plus we have a major uptrend. So I think this, the odds are you know, decently stacked in the favor upside. We just closed that one hour candle now. so. I think that's a decent, decent uh, 50 minute breakout, decent 50 minute candle above that trend line. And all what I would expect for a retracement is maybe max to this trend line, and then I would expect a bounce. If it doesn't, then I'll gladly step out. My stop loss is about here. Or maybe not gladly step out, but <laughs> that's what the trade idea is in any case. So Pound Yen is making a small retracement, but the moving average is already pointed up, so those will probably act as support. Euro Yen also had some breakout, so that's good. I hope that we only the only thing is that I hope we get the follow through as well. Dollar Yen did manage to break this top, which means that there's a, a good likelihood of it getting followed through as well. And how about the odd USD? 
still right at that level. Didn't really move anywhere the last uh, couple of minutes. Just uh, hanged in around at uh, this level. There is some divergence of the five-minute world, so I wouldn't be surprised, as I said, to see both flag here or or down move. But at the moment, still pushing. Well, folks, I don't want to hold you here uh, without me, uh, you know, having anything planned for you. This is about it. What I wanted to share. So, if you have any questions, by all means, let me know. Otherwise, I guess we'll wrap it up soon, and we'll be back tomorrow with reversal trading. Uh, on the 29th, Wednesday, same time, same place. So I'm looking for uh, your dollar upside continuation. Um, dollar Swissy down, your yen up, pound yen up, maybe even odd yen up, but I have some doubts about the odd. Dollar CAD, pound CAD, hope those some of those would turn out well today. Pound yen was doing very nicely, but it's retracing. But those ups and downs is something that we'll have to always uh, always be uh, be aware of, right? No profits without ups and downs. All right, folks, don't see any questions, so thanks again for joining me. I wish you all great trading. Cheers, everyone. The